My name is David Chandler and I'm the New South Wales Building Commissioner and today we've got the uh, privilege of uh, talking with Peter Dumphy. Peter's the uh, Executive Director of uh, Compliance and Dispute Resolution in BRD. Peter, why don't you tell us a bit about BRD and your role? Yeah, thank you David and thank you for inviting me today, it's a great pleasure. The, uh, to me, um, Better Regulation Division is really about uh, protecting the consumers and protecting the public uh, and in delivering innovative regulatory services. So we are like a collective of regulators, a little bit like Service New South Wales for regulators in that we bring together a whole range of regulators and that includes fair trading, safe work, uh, liquor and gaming, uh, mine subsidence and a range of other uh, little regulators as well and the intention is to really provide comprehensive and joined up uh, regulatory services. From a regulator's point of view, what are the few of the most challenging issues? Mm. So for us I think it is moving to much more to a proactive uh, focus. Uh, certainly um, in the past we've certainly focused a lot on complaints and resolving consumer complaints but we re really want to get ahead of the curve in terms of that and make sure that we're actually preventing complaints from arising in the first place. So for us it is focusing on the most important uh, building uh, uh, standard issues and that can be around waterproofing, it can be around uh, structural issues, it can be around fire safety. So we really want to make sure that um, builders understand and uh, everybody in the, um, the ecosystem of the building work understand what they need to be doing. So for us, a focus on harm prevention rather than re reactive responding to issues, uh, preventing it before it occurs, building capability within the industry so that um, uh, all of the players in the, in the industry have the appropriate um, standards and, and uh, capability to do their work, but also ensuring that consumers uh, also understand their obligations and can exercise those obligations successfully. Uh, and it's also about creating a level playing field. We want to remove those riskier players. We want to make sure the people who are doing the right thing are protected and, uh, and encouraged. From the 1st of September, of course, uh, we've now got major legislation starting to stand up in New South Wales. There's the Residential Apartment Buildings Compliance and Enforcement Powers Act. Uh, that starts on the 1st of September. And of course, we're now doing the preparation to get the industry ready for the introduction of the Design and Building Practitioners Act, which really starts in effect from the 1st of July next year. It's really quite a big piece. Um, what's happening inside BRD to get ready for that? Yeah, well look, I mean, firstly, it's been great that collaborative uh, relationship we've had with the Office of the Building Commissioner and working together on standing up a compliance team which is focused primarily and initially on the occupation certificate audit. So there's been a, a, a great body of work being done in getting the, both the, the resources into the organisation but also upskilling um, and setting in place all of the uh, systems that need to support that uh, team. So we've now got, um, as of today, I think 14 new um, uh, uh, professionals on, on uh, board and we'll continue to grow that and we'll be doing more recruitment but uh, it really is about making sure that they've got the appropriate skills. Now we're actually in the uh, process of working with the industry to test the audit tools, make sure we've got um, that rise and that we're picking up the important issues uh, and following those through. And that will be a phased process, so at the moment we're focusing on the occupation certificate audits, but uh, in the subsequent phases we'll be looking also as the, at the design, uh, uh, design requirements and also the as-built uh, declarations as well. So we'll reposition and refocus as the legislation rolls out and as the priorities change. Peter, over the last six months, we've both been sitting at the table and we've seen an enormous digital capability build. It's been really quite amazing and uh, I think it'd be great for the viewers to understand just how significant the digital capability and data is going to be in how the future regulator is going to operate. Do you want to just talk to that a little? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I think to me this is the most exciting part of the journey uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of culture change, you really need the systems to support both our staff but also the industry as well to really affect those changes. So the, um, the work that's been done on the digital front really is about bringing together what has been quite siloed information and inaccessible information and making that really inaccessible making that very accessible uh, and also allowing people to tell us once and then for us to be able to really use that data effectively. We collect so much data but we often don't use it and this is really will free up that data so that we can actually really access it and use it in a way that will protect the community uh, and also ensure that everybody who's got obligations 
uh, gets the right information so they can do that. So we've been working, uh, as you can see on the slide, there's, there's quite a huge ecosystem of uh, different systems. The, um, the single um, view of building is a really critical one for us. Uh, it means that all of our regulators, whether it's in safe work or fair trading um, and the work that we do in building regulation, that we've got access to that information uh, and we can act on that. And, uh, and same with the, uh, uh, in terms of the industry as well, that they've got access to that too. The other really important part of that is the, uh, the you know, to be a really effective regulator, we need to be risk-based. So the risk-based um, tool that we're using in terms of the multi-risk um, multi rating um, tool will be really helpful for us in terms of being able really to identify and to target very specifically the areas that we need to focus on, which will be really quite critical. And then the third element of that is uh, ensuring that we've got good business intelligence to drive the business and so that our staff and our managers have really good dashboards to be able to see where we're heading and make sure we're heading in the right direction. So Peter, um, the other elements of this are that uh, the industry will be quite enthusiastic about the fact that perhaps in the risk rating landscape as we go forward is that we'll start to be moving away from one size fits all in the way that we actually treat the good players and the risky players and maybe we create more autonomy for the good players. The other benefit I think for taxpayers and for the industry has got to be the fantastic work that's been done by DPI in the uh, in the e-planning platform and soon to be followed by the e-strata platform which is coming up. Um, maybe you could just share with the fact uh, with the viewers that there's some really great intersections that we've been able to build here such that we the single source of truth as you were talking about or tell us once we're now seeing that go across agencies so how do you feel about that? Well that's been the other really exciting element is being able to work across co-regulators so as you say working with planning, working with local government, working with fire and rescue uh, and so that we can all actually get a really good view of what's going on. The e-planning um, uh, portal is going to be really quite critical in terms of that uh, and, it, and it also means that we can actually get real information very quickly when, when issues arise, we can get the, the right information. We all have been through that experience of having to deal with buildings where it's taken weeks and maybe months to actually get the appropriate plans for those particular buildings. So now that will all be available. It means that we can respond much more quickly and rectify issues much more quickly as they arise. So for us that will be quite critical in terms of that. But we're also doing a huge amount in the uh, the licensing platform and also the strata platform as well. So that will mean that it's almost like the whole life cycle will be there in terms of really being able to provide useful information at any point in that life cycle of the building that we can um, we can rely on in terms of both um, for the community to have uh, that access to information but also for us to be able to use that uh, in our compliance work. So Peter, we're um, 20 years into this century and um, we're really now starting to see the first of the real power of the 21st century uh, data analytics and all of the supports that are going to go there. I guess the, uh, the definition of people having digital twins is suddenly going to become a reality because with the new government licensing platform and the relationship with lodging documents into the e-planning portal, there's going to be a real connectivity there. So I guess the message to uh, all the players is that you better start looking after your digital twin going forward. Exactly, and I mean, I think the for me the other thing is uh, you just need to be aware that things the technology is changing so quickly that there'll be new tools and new uh, new things that we haven't even thought about now. In, you know, very closely on the horizon. I just look back at my long career and where that started in terms of the technology and how quickly. And, and you always sort of at a particular point in time, you always think that that is all you're going to have access to. But we all know from experience how quickly the technology changes. Yeah, well, don't mention how long we've both been around, but we're now looking forward. So um, yes. that's, that's the exciting bit. So in the next month, we're actually sitting down to uh, talk about what will the regulator look like after 2022. So we've got a series of planning meetings to talk about what are the sorts of, uh, what, what will be the context of an industry that we're designing a future regulator into and what will be the harms that will exist in that context. Um, we've got a date with Destiny on the in March 2022. Why don't you just share with us some uh, thoughts about the journey that you see that we're going to make? Mm. Well to me this is the really creative part of the process because we can really reinvent our future and, and we need to because we really need to be an exemplar 
regulator and we need to build that trust in the community and we need to ensure that we're actually delivering uh, in terms of the regulatory framework that we're administering. So this is a great opportunity for us to really think about um, how we can do it um, more innovatively, um, differently. Um, I mean, I think the challenges, um, COVID I think has shown that challenges gives you that great opportunity to, um, to actually rework the way that you do your business and rework um, all of the systems that you, you may use to actually deliver. And at the end of it, you realise that you can do things much better in a much different way. I think the, the crisis that we've had in the building sector has really given us that opportunity to reinvent uh, how we'll operate. So the next 12 months is a very creative piece. It is really focusing on the customer at the centre, understanding the customer's journey uh, and, um, and all of our community's journey in terms of the, uh, the, the built environment and how we as a regulator can really um, uh, have the most impactive um, uh, uh, effect in terms of really ensuring that we are preventing harm. So viewers will have uh, heard Peter's views on how all that's moving in the organisation he leads and I'd want to acknowledge the fact that um, over 12 months I've seen the most uh, amazing shift in enthusiasm and understanding of what we have to do in the next uh, short while. Uh, of course BRD is just part of the overall uh, Department of Customer Service family and we are able to draw on all of the resources, the DAC and a whole range of digital capabilities but expertise at the executive level and uh, we're working on an agenda that the Deputy Secretary has described to the team as a, a, a greenhouse project and uh, that fits into the government's lighter, lighthouse project. So this is very much, Peter, a contextual piece of the overall government's forward-looking agenda as to how do we serve the citizens of, of New South Wales better. So I think you, know, you can be congratulated and you can take back to your team recognition already that uh, we can see that transformation. So. Thanks a lot for coming in today and sharing your insights with the viewers today. Thank you, David, and it's been a great pleasure working with the Office of the Building Commissioner over the last 12 months, and it really has, you've, you've been a great um, mentor to us and uh, uh, has been really, it's been really valuable, I think, in terms of the collaborative relationship that we've had. Well, let's see if we can make that really turn into something substantive for the consumers of New South Wales and as well Let's, let's work on creating a better industry because until we change the brand of this industry, we're not going to have an industry that's attractive to the next cohort of construction professionals and practitioners. So very much part of the work we're going to do going forward is about attracting people to come into this industry as a great place, a worthwhile place to work. So Peter, thank you for coming along today. Thank you, David.